Welcome back. We're talking about modern dating and relationships with Natasha and Todd today. And uh, Todd, I cut you off before you could really give your ideas on what, um, basically the sexes and the genders, what are, are their differences in expressing themselves in the dating world? Do you feel like women are just as sexual as men? I think it's definitely changed. I think society is, is more open to women being sexual and expressing that. Uh, but like Natasha said, it's still not the same. Um, you know, back to Tinder, it, it's, women are on there a lot and, and sometimes just to, to hook up. I mean, in Cayman, it's, it's very interesting here where <laughs> you could swipe through and you'll see, uh, you know, oh, there's my ex and oh, there's somebody I work with and oh, there's my friend's girlfriend. Wait, why, why is my friend's girlfriend? <laughs> Um, but it, it, women, women do that for you know whatever needs they may have. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I have to admit that I, I actually gave a speech to a school, a, like a whole auditorium full of children, about sexual exploitation and the dangers of using these apps and like sending nude pictures. And then afterwards, I was like, wait a minute, I don't actually know directly what these are like because I've never been on one. So I decided to sign up for Tinder and see what it was like. So I ran this little experiment, and it was quite interesting what you find, the conversations you have. And, you know, I feel like now I can speak from personal experience, so I sure. think that makes it a better um, a way to explain what it's like. But I think you're right. Both of you have I, uh, both elements to it. So there can be success stories where people meet and have, like, successful relationships where they're happy and they get what they want out of it, and there are relationships that are just meant to be temporary, and people are happy with that too. But I've also heard some pretty scary stories about Tinder. I, so. imagine. <laughs> yeah. I think it comes down to... Honesty in, in your communication, right, in terms of relationships. If somebody wants something short-term and the other person also does, if you communicate that with each other and you can be honest about it, I think it can work. But it's, you know, in a lot of cases, there's dishonesty or somebody wants something but doesn't communicate it. Mm. And I think that's where it fails. And I think there's another topic that I'd like to just throw out there that relates to this, the hooking up sort of phenomenon. Is it the same or similar to the idea of friends with benefits? Because that was something new that uh, you know, I learned about. And to me, I mean, I think friends with benefits can be tricky because you might not know what you're getting into. It might be one person's way of, or one, what one person is looking for, but maybe not what the other person is looking for. So I think you're right with honesty and communication. It's so important to put that out there. Yeah, I feel like with friends with benefits, though, uh, your intentions can get um, out of control. Like, you know, there's a, I, we always call it, one of you guys always catch a case. A feeling, <laughs> right? So that, uh, you yeah. end up catching feelings as much as you want to keep everything just casual and, you know, they're a good friend and they're attractive and you want to have, you know, someone, you, you still want to be sexually active, but you're not really looking to go out and, you know, get dirty. So, you know, you have friends that you want to hook up with, but eventually somebody always wants something more. It's just bound to happen, especially when they are friends, you know? So it's really hard to keep that, that line drawn. It's a very fine line. So that's pretty hard. Yeah. And do you have any tips, either of you, of maybe someone who's looking for that, like how to keep it, I don't know, intentional? Well, you know, if you're friends with somebody, there's obviously, you know, you have a connection with another person. Um, and, and then to add friends with benefits means that you're also physically attracted to that person. Um, and I, it, it can work, I think, but I, it's, it's obviously a short-term solution. Short -term. It's not something long-term that will work. Um, and, and again, it goes back to communicating. And, and as long as you're both you know, on the same page in terms of what you want and, and, and talk about everything, you know, one thing you should talk about is, well, what if I meet somebody? You know, everyone's okay with that. If I meet somebody that I want to date, and then your friends with benefits is over. And as long as everyone knows that, then, you know, no one's feelings are hurt. Yeah, so I guess what you're saying is that if you're able to find someone that you can communicate with, which I think is sort of the hardest part, is to find someone That's on right. your same level that you can have that intellectual, uh, mature conversation with, and then sort of put that out there and establish those boundaries of the relationship that that can be a successful relationship even if it's short term. Exactly. Because I think sometimes we assume that successful and healthy relationships are only the ones that lead to long term relationships, oh. um, serious, steady, possibly domestic partnerships or marriage, but that's not necessarily what is successful to those people. No, it's, it's successful as long as it doesn't end badly. <laughs> yeah. It can end in disaster, you can, can lose a friend, you can hurt, you know, people's feelings can be hurt. Um, and so it's, it's I wouldn't say it, it's something that has a high success rate in that case, mm -hmm. but um, you know, it, it can be successful 
I agree with that. I, it's, it's hard to find. There's always somebody who gets hurt. Yeah. And what about if we sort of move it along to open relationships? Um, I don't know how friends with benefits would fit in with that or if it's just a totally different concept, but what is your take on open relationships and how can we find success in those types of relationships? I think, again, it goes back to communication. If, if you're in a relationship with someone, what your relationship is, is is how you define it. It's not how everyone outside of you defines it. It could be what society thinks a relationship is, and that's you know two people that are monogamous and they do X, Y, and Z, and they live together and 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 everything that they think it should be. Um, but is, if you're in a interpersonal relationship with another human being, how you define your relationship is is what it is. And, and if you communicate with that other person and you say an example of an open relationship, you know, I, I would like to, you know, do X, and, and are you okay with that? And if they're, if they're okay with that, if that's something they want to do, you have an agreement in place. And as long as everyone sticks to that agreement and the honesty and communication is there, then it can work. But how hard is that to be honest about your inner desires and your, you know, the, the things that a lot of people keep private? To have that level of relationship with someone where you're transparent about the thoughts and, and feelings um, and, and desires that you want to act out. I mean, I think that's so hard to find. You do. You have to, you have to open yourself to somebody in, in order to communicate that. And that's not, uh, that's not an easy thing to do. But I think there are some misconceptions about maybe what open relationships are and how they compare to, uh, I mean, now I've heard a lot about polygamous relationships or polyamory, um, those types of relationships. And I guess that's a form of, of open relationships too. Um, but I mean, I, I have talked to people who are happy. So I think maybe there's a, still a lot of myths and misunderstandings about these various types of relationships and we're not gonna get to them today. But I think having the conversation is, is the first part. So we will stop and take a break, but come back and join us for this conversation on Love Life.